Eh, still better than Disney's Percy Jackson. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, the sequel nobody asked for. If you didn't see my review of the first movie, I will give a brief summary of what I thought of the movie. It was shit. One of the most puzzling movies I have ever seen. A horror movie based on Winnie the Pooh is already a bad idea, but the weirdest thing about that movie is that it did absolutely nothing with the lore of the Winnie the Pooh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, property, I guess. That wasn't the word I was looking for, but it means the same thing. They did nothing with it other than a few names. Having Christopher Robin and having the killers be Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. That was about the only connections it had to Winnie the Pooh. And from what I saw with the early reports, this movie was going to lean a little bit more into that. And something else that was weird about the first movie is that it's inherently a silly idea, but they played it way too straight. That should have been a dark comedy slash horror film. It shouldn't have tried to be a straight up slasher movie like the Halloween movies or Friday the 13th. It should have tried to throw in a bit of dark comedy, kind of poking fun at the fact that this is inherently a silly and, let's be fair, stupid idea. So a sequel, if they did it right, could possibly fix this idea. And I already talked about the fact, I talked about this a couple times now, that this is building up an entire cinematic universe known as the Twisted Childhood Universe. It's a clever name, I'll give them that, but I won't give them anything else. So later this year, we're getting Pinocchio Unstrung, and we're also getting Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare, and Bambi The Reckoning, or Bambi Reckoning, or something like that. And they were teased in the end credits of this, and I don't mean like there was a setup for I do think there was a setup at some point where he was looking at the doctor that we'll get into later. But one of the things that showed up on screen when he was looking through the little articles was deer was a deer disease. And I have a feeling that was a slight setup for Bambi Re the Reckoning. And then in the end credits. Or the, I, you know what, I'll get to that, to it actually later, but I will say is that it was kind of teased during, it was teased, they were teased during the end credits, including the Pooniverse movie, which again, sounds really dirty when I say it out loud. And there was even, they said that it would be, sh the other movies would be shown in art, in little drawings at the end credits, and even Pooniverse was one of it. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that next year, but let's get to Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. The movie starts off already on stupid ground, where the town of Ashton, is it Ashdown, or something like Ashdown, I think, they blame Christopher Robin for the massacre that happened in the first movie. Why? I've never heard of... A time where a bunch of people were killed anywhere. There was lo one lone survivor, and the survivor was blamed for the murders. Now I get that his story of walking, of walking, talking bear and pigs, and everything. I get they wouldn't buy that, but I think what would actually happen in that scenario, it would be they assumed they were people disguising themselves that way or maybe he was like too like in fear that he didn't see it clearly like maybe it was just big dudes and maybe he was like he saw them as like a giant bear and a giant hog that something like that they wouldn't blame him for the deaths in the first movie apparently there are a few people who believe him but there are very few and that leads to the next part of the movie where some hunters who believe Christopher's story actually go out and try to hunt them down. And I will say this, I did not expect that they kill Piglet immediately. Like, the the hunters, they have big uh, shotguns and everything. He just fucking blows Piglet's head off. Which kind of makes the first movie worse, because these creatures are taken down kind of easily. 
And we'll get more into that later. But, yeah, they, and then they are killed by Pooh. Owl, want, who, Owl and Tigger are in this movie. Tigger's barely in it, actually. He, uh, actually, I want to say the creatures in general are not in this movie as much as you'd think. They are, they're, like, MIA for about 75% of this movie. They don't do much. But, Owl tries to convince Pooh that they should attack Ashdown instead of waiting for people to come to them. And, uh, in theory, if you're, like, one of these murderous creatures, that actually, sound, that actually sounds like a sound strategy. And Pooh starts to consider that after the hunters come in and kill Piglet. Now, at this point, Christopher Robin has been going through some ther hypnotherapy. And this movie completely rips off the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, where he's finding suppressed memories of his brother being kidnapped when they were kids, and he's trying to remember the guy who took him. This is a straight-up rip on Five Nights at Freddy's, and it doesn't do it nearly as good as that movie did. So, eventually, he is working as a doctor, apparently, or a nurse, or whatever, and he loses his job due to the controversy. Very similar to... Spider-Man No Way Home, where Peter can't, Peter and his friends can't get into college because of the controversy surrounding him and Mysterio. So, he eventually finds the janitor who works at that hospital, who used to work for a doctor. Can't remember the doctor's name, because the doctor actually doesn't show up in the movie. He might be dead, but he just they don't say, and he's not here. He was tasked with picking, with finding children for experiments, and Billy, who's Christopher Robin's brother, ended up being one of them. And they did not, and it was crossing human with animal biology. And I think you know where I'm going with this. Unfortunately. So they obviously did not survive the process, because, obviously, that's probably the most realistic thing in this movie. And they come back to life in the form of the Hundred Acre Wood animals. Okay, okay, okay. I already mentioned in the, in the first movie, when I reviewed it, that changing the lore from, an, from talking animals that Christopher Robin just found in the woods instead of his toys coming to life was already kind of a stupid decision because it just didn't make any sense. Like, why change that? Now I know why. This is stupid. And what makes it even worse is a flashback to when Christopher Robin was a kid. Now, both in the drawings of the first movie and every other incarnation of this franchise, Pooh is about this big. Yeah, she's, he's the size of a toy because he's a toy. But considering they changed that... <laughs> There's literally a kid who's, like, the same age as Christopher because, again, his brother is Pooh. Ugh. But, and again, again another rip-off of the fight is afraid. The kids they kidnapped were, inst instead of being merged with animals, were put into the, uh, or their ghosts are controlling the, the animatronics. Good God. But, I digress. What was my point? Oh, yeah. So there's literally a kid who's, I don't know, tw I don't know how old the kid is, in a younger Pooh costume, and it looks silly. It looks ridiculous watching Christopher Robin hang out with this, with this younger Pooh. And I will say the suits look better in this movie than they did in the first one, but honestly, or I should say they look creepier and they're higher budget, but they still look fake. And I did kind of like the... I like, I like the original more with the costumes because they did kind of look like their Disney counterparts, which made it a bit more eerie when you look up. Now it's just a bear, a tiger, an owl, and a giant fat-ass hog killing people. It's there's The surrealness is gone. And so a bunch of other shit happens. Pooh ends up killing Christopher Robin's friends and family, except for his girlfriend and his sister. They kill a bunch of people at a rave because I guess raves are still a thing. Are they? Uh, somebody tell me, are raves still a thing? Because I can tell you throughout my entire high school and college life, college so far, I have never met a single person who has ever been to a rave. 
ever. So, are, are those really still a thing? Whatever, not the point. They kill a bunch of people. Tigger's kind of saying and doing a bunch of stupid shit while he kills people. Honestly, I was really hoping it would have been stupid as hell, but it would have been funny. Again, lean more into, like, the surreal, like, dark comedy side of it. It could have worked. Have Tigger, like, saying his song. Like, he doesn't have to sing it, but, you know, the wonderful thing about Tigger's song. Have him, like, speak that while he's, like, stalking people. That would have been so damn funny. This should have been a horror comedy. There's so much you could do with that. But no, they made it a straight slasher, so they killed Tigger... I think he's, like, Christopher shoots him, and then he kind of, like, walks off. I don't, rem I don't remember them actually, like, full-on killing him, but whatever. And then um, he kills Pooh. And the end of the movie is Christopher Robin getting his name clear, for one. And two is Owl saying, talking about how he will get Christopher Robin, and they will, and he will revive his friends. And then you cut to the credits with all the shameful setups for the next few movies. This movie sucked. So the acting is still awful. I'm sorry. I don't like bashing bad acting performances, unless it's from actors I really don't like. Like, if you're gonna, like, if I see a bad performance out of Rachel Zegler or Amber Heard or one of these actors I can't stand, or Alec Baldwin, one of these actors I can't stand, I will feel, I will not feel bad about bashing them, but I'm sorry, the acting's bad in this. The dialogue is cringy. The story still makes no goddamn sense in this giant ripoff of Finance of Freddy's. There was nothing in this movie. I am not looking forward to the rest of this stupid, twisted childhood universe. I know I'm gonna, be, I know I'm gonna have to see it, but God, I don't want to. Everything about this movie was a fail. I guess it was an improvement over the first movie. I mean, people are giving it a positive review based on the fact that it was an improvement over the first movie. So, yay, you improve from a pile of shit that automatically makes you a good movie? Big fucking F. So, yeah, that's all I got, and... I need to go watch something good. Is there anything good out? You know what, if Ghostbusters sucks, I might have to change the name of this channel to the Hollywood Pessimist. To the Hollywood Pessimist. Because I just will not trust anything out of Hollywood anymore. I will assume everything Hollywood puts out is garbage. So that's all I got. I'll see you all next time. Bye.